Well, hi guys, welcome to picture this. My name's Dan. Now I've been a professional photographer for over 12 years, and I've shot everything from landscapes to portraits to weddings to events, etc. Now I'm only a small channel. As you can say, I've just got under 500 subscribers. So if you're interested in photography or even interested in following my journey, you can say I, I cover tutorials from obviously stock photography to selling any work online, etc. So if you're new to my channel, hit that like and subscribe. But on that, on that note, we're just going to get straight in. Well, hi guys, well thanks for sticking with me. Like I said, my name's Dan, and today I've brought you back on location. And where am I? I'm at the National Library of Wales. Now, we're talking about architecture photography today, and some of the hints and tips and tricks that I've picked up over the years of shooting professional photography. Now, if you've got any questions during this video, please let me know down in the comments, and I'll try and help out as many people as I can. But today, I've brought you to, yes, the National Library of Wales. You can say, if you've been here before, you can say, let me know down in the comments. I'd be quite interested to find out if basically, if anybody's actually been up here. Now, we can't go inside today, obviously, due to COVID and the restrictions, etc. So we are, we are going to be obviously talking about architecture. We are going to be taking a few different shots of, of the building, and I'll be sharing the, the results during this video. Now, architecture photography is also known as building photography or structured photography. Now, it, can, it doesn't just have to be buildings and structures, okay? It can be, it can be cityscapes, it can be monuments, it can be castles, any, any type of structure. And as I say, that's classed as architecture photography. Now my next helpful tip for you guys is basically when we're shooting in harsh lighting conditions, you can say because sometimes the, the sun can be so high, it can ruin our images. And why? Because the sun can obviously play havoc with the camera, and you say, and what will happen, our images will start coming out overexposed and too bright. Now if that's what's happening, bring a polarizing filter with you, okay? Because that's going to knock back a lot of those harsh lighting conditions and that glare, and you say, and it'll remove some of those shadows so you can improve on your photography. Now, when shooting any type of architecture, whether or not that's the National Library of Wales, or you're shooting a monument or a castle, for instance, okay, we don't want to just be thinking about the building as in a whole, okay, because at the end of the day, there are so many other details you can pick up when looking at the buildings, okay. So we think about the windows, we think about the shapes and the leading lines, etc. So be creative and think about the, ang the angle you're taking it on, and think about different perspectives when shooting any type of photography. So change your angle and shoot from side on, straight on, and as you say, when we shoot low down, we can create depth. When we shoot high up, we, we can obviously pick picture up the well pick up the the size of the building, for instance. So um, so when we're out there and we're taking a number of different shots, don't just think about just one or two pictures of the building. Think about different angles and different perspectives. Now, when choosing any type of architecture, we want to ensure basically we've got natural lighting or at least decent lighting, because if we haven't, we're going to say our image is going to come out underexposed. And what's underexposed? They're too dark. Overexposed? Too bright. Now it doesn't really matter if you're shooting a structure or a building or a monument or a cityscape. You can say if you come out at different times of the day to shoot the same thing, you can end up with different results. Same, same as if we come out at first thing in the morning to last thing at night or mid-evening. We're going to see things differently all the time because the, the conditions change. So don't be afraid to get out there and try different things, okay? Now when I come to shoot different obviously monuments and buildings and street photography, etc., always think about your perspective, think about different angles and try and be as creative, creative as you can. As I can say, if you've got any questions regarding architecture, please let me know down in the comments below and I'll try and help out as many people as I can. Now you're probably all wondering, where is, where is the images used for architecture? Well, they're used for brochures, they're used for leaflets and websites and promotional material. So if you are shooting a, a certain venue or a certain building or a certain monument, you say, get in touch with the local authority or the building or the, or the business owner and, say, and see if they'll be interested in any of your work. Now my next helpful tip for you guys is basically don't forget to include people with your architecture because obviously architecture wouldn't be there without people there as well. So we're going to say don't be afraid to, to capture people there. It creates a sense of movement. Now think about those diagonal lines as well. You can say because what they do is they also like draw your eyes in like leading lines do. But what diagonal lines do is they they convey movement as well, just like people do. So you can say try different, try and be creative in so many different ways with your camera. Now like I said earlier on in the video, architects know the importance of leading lines and and shapes and structures okay so use those to your advantage and try and pick up on the building as a whole like I said earlier on and some of the small details around the edges and again don't just shoot straight on shoot from the side shoot from around the corner and think about different different aspects and different perspectives when you're taking your shots now my next helpful tip for you guys and girls is basically don't forget to edit your images okay because what we can do we can we can increase the awareness of the building and bring, bring out some of the details obviously in editing but what we don't want to do is remove any, any of those details because architecture is all about picking up those fine little details and not just the building itself. So 
go out there, try Snapseed, try Lightroom, and see what works and what doesn't. And say, because how I edit an image and how you edit an, edit an image is going to be totally different because we see things differently. Just the way when we take a picture, I'll take it differently to the way you take it. But again, everybody's different in their own creative way. Now, my next helpful tip for you guys is basically when we're shooting any type of architecture or structure, we don't want to be just thinking about obviously one particular aspect of it, okay? Because I said we, we don't want the images just to look aesthetically pleasing and graphic, okay? What we want is to so, show some structure and dynamics to the, to the building or the structure you're trying to capture. Now, if you've got any questions regarding architecture, let me know down in the comments below and I'll try and help out as many people as I can. And say, if you're new to my channel or you're getting into photography or you're a budding photographer, hit that like and subscribe. But on that note, we're going to be leaving it there and say, I'll see you in the next one. But let's stay home, let's save lives and protect the NHS. And I'll see you in the next one. But thanks for watching.